Get that fucking crack out of your life. You have legacies to build. We grew that business from 3.4 million to 17.1. Horsepower, not horse shit. You want to be the parent that's an ally. They don't need another fucking friend. Not everybody's cup of whiskey. Toughest advice for the toughest businessman. Be relentless. My friend and world builder mastermind member, Tom Burns, just celebrated his 29th year of sobriety. He, uh, he sent me a message um, a couple of days ago uh, on his birthday that, uh, um, that announced it was 10,000 585 days without a drink. 29 years of glorious sobriety. And he sent me a picture of his AA chip that he got for his 29th year. And on the chip it says his name, the dates. He quit on his 35th birthday. Uh, and the quote on the chip is, never let the old man in. Never let the old man in. So I love that quote. Tom shared that quote on one of our, on his mastermind hot seat, and it's been a writer downer for me. Uh, never let the old man in. And that's the life that he leads. He's uh, incredibly young, mentally young, emotionally young, physically young, um, you know, attitude, mindset, language, energy, all 20 years below his biological age. Never let the old man in. So Tom said to me, he goes, just so you know, my record is 10,585 and O. Oh. I talk about the Jerry Seinfeld, don't break the red chain calendar. And uh, that's what, you know, we, we put red X's on our calendar every single day for walking, go off there Cliff, for walking and for writing and for reading. Come on Cliff, get off there. There you go, there you go, go, get off here. Stay. So, you know, I've been teaching that for 10 years where you need to put a calendar up on your wall. Mine is beside my nightstand. And I have one or two things that I have to do every day to earn that red X. And last year I went 366 days and 360, uh, six and O. Oh one year plus one day of walking every day and shooting a video. I never missed a single day. I never missed a day when it came to winter, to summer, to bugs. I was sick with the China virus. I was happy, I was sad, I was motivated. I was not motivated. We moved countries, we traveled. 366 and 0. The scoreboard never lies. The scoreboard always says who's best. Bill Parcells 101. So when Tom sent me that 29 year photo of the chip, his AA chip, and said 10,585 and oh, I was like, fuck me. That's badass. That's badass. 29 years one day at a time, helping other people along the way through the AA program. It's like serving others has been a huge part of his recovery. That's what he's personally told me. He said, you know, I wouldn't make it if I didn't serve other people through the AA program. People approach him, they ask him how he does it. He takes them to meetings, he introduces them to the program. He's been a sponsor for other people. Just serving other people is part of his recovery. If you need help changing something, 
One of the greatest ways is to replace a bad ha habit, but you gotta replace it with something positive. Us, you know, a, a take a taker habit and replace it with a service habit. That's the, that's the way to do it. So part of Tom's recovery, these uh, last 29 years has a bit a big part of it has been contribution to others. So it's amazing how some people can put months together, even years together, getting that red Seinfeld X. Seinfeld used to say every day he had to write comedy for an hour. This was in his heyday when he was the highest paid comic on planet Earth. And Seinfeld was being interviewed one time and they asked him, you know, what was of course his secret to success? What made him so much better and more successful and wealthier than all the other comics combined? And he talked about never breaking the red chain. And never breaking the red che chain, man. He said, there's one thing I have to do. There's one thing I have to do every day to be, you know, the best at my craft, to be the very best at my art. And that one thing is writing comedy. So he would self-discipline himself to sit his, his butt down and he would literally write comedy, skits and lines and jokes and, uh, you know, things for the show for an hour a day. Seven days a week, three, th 30 days a month, 365 days a year, Christmas, Thanksgiving, happy, sad. He would show up every day and does to this day. Then his reward was the red X on the calendar. And then he said, my only goal in business is to never break the red chain, to never, ever, ever have a day where I don't write comedy, to never, ever, ever break the red chain. And the red chain is the red X is an entire calendar, a week of red X's, a month of red X's, a year of red X's. So, it's amazing how some men can put, you know, weeks and months and years of consecutive consistent X's on a calendar. I have guys that are going to go 365 and 0 this year in my masterminds with the one or two things there they do every day, whether it's reading, writing, walking. And then I have guys that can't even put, you know, two days together or they can't put seven days together. They go, you know, they do, they're five and oh, and then they, they, their whole weekend is a disaster. Their weekends make them weak. Well, I, I can't find time on the weekends. I'm, I'm busy. Notice the language. Notice the language, can't. I'm gonna try, notice the language, try. And uh, it's just, it's the same pattern over and over again. But I think it's more than just self-discipline, a lack of self-discipline. I think when it comes to consistently showing up as the best version of yourself, doing the, you know, one or two things that you need to do every day to be the best man, best husband, best father, best entrepreneur that you can be. I think it's much deeper than willpower for me, willpower doesn't work. I think it's environment, and I think it's something in your core, and I attribute it to not being able to live with losing. So I'll give you an example. Um, back, way back in, in 1988, when Notre Dame fighting Irish football team won the uh, the national title with coach Lou Holtz at the uh, at the helm Tony Rice was the uh, the underrated quarterback not the easiest thing to do win a national title at an actual college where they have classes and especially in the 80s a lot of that has changed so they uh, they talked to Holtz about how the hell were you able to do the next to impossible? Win a national title at Notre Dame. 
And he said, you know, when I took over this program, it was on probation. It was at the bottom of the barrel. They hadn't won. They had been through five different head coaches in a decade. The program was losing. It wasn't respected. Kids didn't want to play there anymore. So like Jimmy Johnson in Miami and in Dallas, he just simply got rid of all the losers. He got rid of all the losers on the coaching staff, on the athletic staff, uh, and, and in the locker room. And he said one thing in his mindset dominated, dominated more than anything else was, I want guys on my football team that can't live with losing. I want guys in my locker room that simply can't live with losing. And then Holtz went on to explain that everybody wants to win. The bum on the corner wants to win. The kid who's sitting in his mom's basement playing video games and smoking pot and, and watching porn and hasn't worked a day in his life. He wants to win. You want to win? Sure, I'd love to win. Everybody wants to win. That's as common, that's as common as can be. But what separates the 99% from the 1%, the champions from the chumps, the winners from the pretenders, is this absolute sick to your stomach, absolute sick to your stomach feeling when you don't win. And I read this book 20 years ago and I wrote it down then and I took that into my coaching career in the sport of hockey, junior and pro. And every time I was dealing with an athlete, whether I was recruiting a player, whether I was trading for a player, whether I was drafting a player, I would always think about what Lou Holt said. Can this player live with losing? And the majority of time, the answer was yes. So then, I wouldn't draft him, I wouldn't trade for him, and I wouldn't have him in my locker room. I don't care, blue chip prospect, I don't care, 50 goals a year, great parents, uh, super talented, I don't care. Can he live with losing? And if he can, lo if he can live with losing, I want nothing to do with them on my team. And it took me a few years to realize that just having a handful of these guys around, whether it's in your business, whether it's in your personal life, whether it's on your sports team like I had, just a handful of guys that can live with losing guarantees your failure. It guarantees your failure. Do you know how many game sevens I lost, how many finals I lost, how many championship rings I cost myself by going against this rule and adding a person, adding a player who, well, you know, he can, he can add, he can score. He'll score big goals for us or, or he, that goaltender, he's going to make the big save for us. And it's called burying yourself in bullshit because losers aren't winners. And when we were competing in the finals against teams like the Castleman Vikings that had won five consecutive league titles, we get to the final and I'm like, we're screwed. We're screwed. As great as we are and all the regular season records that we've set this year and all the points we have, doesn't matter. They have 21 players on their team that can't live with losing. And we had 17 guys who couldn't live with losing and, you know, four guys that could. What was the difference in the series? Why did they win? Why did they beat us at the ultimate, at the ultimate point? They had no guys that could live with losing. Everybody wants to win, but they filled their locker room with young men and coaches and trainers who simply could not live with losing. Losing to them was so dark, so troubling, 
that they would do almost anything to make sure that they didn't experience it. Losing is the ultimate pain for a champion. They don't want to go through it again. They don't want to go through training in the off season. They don't want to go through all the, the time in the gym. They don't want to go through the regular season. They don't want to fight their way back into the playoffs and do it all over again unless they're going to win a championship ring. So finishing second is like, it's the ultimate pain for a true champion, for a contender. And that's what separates the top 1% of 1% from everybody else. And I do see it on all the guys that I work with. I see the most successful guys separate themselves over a year in a mastermind. I see the top one percenters of the top five percenters, as an example, separate themselves. They separate themselves with their homework, how attention, their attention spans during the training. The better just get better. Now, there's exceptions to this rule, but there's no exception to a person not living with losing. They're literally sick to their stomach when they come up short. And then the second part of this equation, of course, is what is losing? You have to be self-aware. You have to understand. And I think that a lot of the men that I work with, they understand losing, you know, um, you know, losing is losing a game, the scoreboard, you know, losing is losing money or if their marketing isn't working. But it's much more than that in life and business. You also have to have this mentality that not showing up is losing. Not showing up is the best version of yourself today, the 2.0 you, 2.0 you is losing. Skipping out on going to the gym is losing. You know, not putting on your shoes when you said you would and walk for an hour is losing. Not sitting your ass down for 10 minutes and writing copy and working Operation Money Suck is losing. And who is that hurting? Who do all those things hurt? You know, drinking too much, too much time on your phone, scrolling your life away, carrying 20 pounds of extra weight, eating toxic foods, participating in the swamps of politics and anti-social media, not getting enough quality rest, sitting up and scrolling and watching TV, not communicating with your queen, not scheduling date nights. Who the hell does that hurt? Does that hurt me? Does that hurt your neighbor? No, it, it hurts you and it hurts your kingdom. It hurts you and your kingdom. When the king does not rise, the kingdom dies. When the king does not rise, the kingdom dies. So I set up a, uh, a challenge. We meet every two weeks, my world builders. So thinking about Tom Burns going 10,585 and 0, I set up a challenge for the guys over the last uh, 14 days, two weeks. We meet every two weeks. And I said to my world builders, I said, listen, you guys need to start committing to Operation Money Suck. You need to sit down every day and you need to write for half an hour, an hour, your marketing, future bank, present bank. And this needs to become a habit in your world. So how do you create a habit? You create a habit with two minutes at a time. Two minutes equals five, five equals 10 minutes, 10 minutes equals 15, 15 equals 20 and onward. That's how you create a habit over 45 days. You start, you sit down and you put your fingers on the keys. That's how you start writing. How do you get good at writing? You write. So I put the, I, the homework and the challenge to the guys was go 14 days, 14 and 0, doing 10 minutes, a measly 10 minutes of Operation Money Suck. And you know what? That's a win every day. That's a, that's a win every day. Go 14 and 0. So it's amazing the difference in men, you know, where can you live with losing? And are you sick to your stomach when you do come up short? And we had a lot of our most successful members put up, you know, outstanding scores of 14 and 0. They have to text Leanne every day, 1 and 0, 2 and 0, 3 and 0, 7 and 0. 
for accountability. If you write for 10 minutes, you get the red X. Don't break the red chain. We had guys go 14 and 0, 13 and 1, 12 and 2 is even respectable, long as those two days make you want to vomit. And then we had guys that were in the middle, ordinary and average. You know, they've got seven and seven, they've got nine and uh, five, um, things like that. Where the stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. Weekends make you weak. Try, I tried, I can't, that kind of stuff in the ordinary. That's, that's quiet desperation effort when you hear that stuff. And then we had some guys that I was, I was truly, truly embarrassed for who went 0-14. They have the skills, they have the abilities, they have the God-given gifts to go 14-0. and 0. They went 0-14. What does 0-14 say to a coach like me? What does it say if my team was 0-14? What does it say if a player is 0-14? It tells me that they're lying to themselves, they're lying to the man in the mirror, and it tells me that they're not serious about writing. They're not really serious about scaling their business from five to six to seven figures. Michael, I want to I want to make six figures a year. No, you don't. Your behavior says you don't. I want to scale to seven figures like you did. No, you don't. You say that, but your behavior tells me you're not serious about it at all. Owen 14. The other thing that's very upsetting about Owen 14 and that these men should be embarrassed about is the fact that it shows they never even started. They never even tried. They had two weeks, you know, I'd rather see somebody put up a pathetic one and 13. I'd rather see somebody put up a pathetic two and 12. At least they sat down, at least they put their hands on the keys, at least they showed up a couple of days. Oh, and 14 just means you don't give a fuck. That's all it means. It just means you're not serious about winning. You're not serious about making this happen. And it guarantees that your environment is not set up so you have any chance to win. You have no chance to win with the environment. I can tell guys that put up 0 and 14 or 2 and 12 or even guys that put up 7 and 7. I can visualize their environment because environment is for champions and willpower is for men that aren't serious about winning. So guys that put up 14 and 0, I, I can I visualize their environment. They have a private home office with a door they can close. They have their laptop on the desk or the kitchen table before everybody's up. They sit down, they have one piece of paper uh, and they sit down and they open up a Word document and they write. They set a timer and they write for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever it becomes. That's a person who's serious about becoming a copywriter. That's a person who's serious about writing for money. And then they do it the next day. So their environment's there. They set out their stuff the night before. They put their laptop on the kitchen table. They put their laptop on the home office desk. As soon as they get up or whenever it's time to write, it's right there. They trip over it. They literally trip over it. They got to look at it. They got to stare at it. They're not, they're not walking around in the dark looking for their laptop. They're not wondering what they're going to write. The night before, they decided that's the one email they're going to write. That's the, the one part of the marketing they're going to work on. Their subconscious works on it all night when they're sleeping, whether they know that at not, or not. They jump out of bed. They do whatever their routine is, and then all of a sudden... They're pretty inspired and pretty focused because they know the one thing they're going to write about. And they sit down with a glass of water or a cup of coffee and they write. 1 and 0, 2 and 0, 3 and 0, 7 and 0, 14 and 0. And every day, every day that's a vote for them, for the new identity. What are you trying to do here? 
What are you trying to do? You're trying to build a new habit. Just like walking, just like, you know, working out, just like reading. All you're trying to do is install a new habit that really serves you. So how do you, how do you install a new habit? It's not difficult. You do the same thing over and over again for 45 days. And that's 45 mental votes for you. Every time you sit down and write, every time you put your shoes on, every time you don't smoke, every time you don't drink booze, is a vote for you. And if you put 45 of these votes together, psychologically, subconscious, conscious, all of a sudden your mind starts to say, hey, this is the new me. This is normal. And then what happens after 45 days of voting for yourself? All of a sudden, not to do it, all of a sudden, not to do it, would make you feel sick to your stomach, would make you feel odd or out of sorts. And I just gave you the recipe for installing any habit in your life. You can literally install a habit so that you make yourself sick to your stomach if you don't do it. If I don't walk, I'm out of sorts. I'm a totally different guy. If I don't get up and walk for 70 minutes, my wife says, get out there and walk. Nobody wants to be around you. Go out and get rid of that energy. Get rid of that whatever it is. Do your brain dump, but go walk. So I walk every single day, every damn day, year after year. Same thing for, you know, reading books. If I didn't read, wouldn't sit down with my morning coffee and, and, and grow my mind, I would feel almost physically ill. After a few days, I would, I, would, I would feel very strange. If I ever got up and checked my phone first, if I ever got up and checked my messages, my email, my, the news, politics, Twitter... If I did any of that horse shit before noon, I would be physically sick. To me, that would be losing. Right off the bat, I'd be wasting my magic time. I'd be pissing away my deep work time. And I would be losing control of my day in the first 10 minutes. So I'd be sick to my stomach. I'd be sick that my creator gave me another day. He gave me one more day. And I threw it away. I threw it away on toxic social media, vomit, politics, scrolling my life away, booze, gambling, pornography, whatever the distraction is. Whatever you hide in, whatever you sedate in, whatever you medicate in. So I set a challenge for these guys for another two weeks yesterday to go 14 and 0. We're gonna separate the men from the boys. We're gonna separate the men from the boys over the next two weeks because I'm extremely dissatisfied with the results. And I'm a results, I'm a results uh, defining guy. Like I'm, uh, if you're eight and eight, you're eight and eight. If you're 16 and 0, you're 16 and 0. If you're two and 14, you're two and 14. And like the great Bill Parcell said, just because you're two and 15 and you lost a whole bunch of games by less than a field goal doesn't mean you're any good. It just means you're no fucking good when it matters. And I don't want guys around me. I don't want employees. I don't want team members. I don't want athletes. I don't want friends. I don't want anybody around me that can live with being no good when it matters. I don't want anybody in my world that can just fluff off a loss. I don't want anybody that can sleep at night after a loss. I want guys and gals that are sick to their stomach. I want guys and gals where there is no finish line. There is no finish line. And I want guys and gals in my world that understand that every day is a gift and that you have a moral responsibility a moral responsibility to serve other people and to every day get up and become the best version of yourself. To literally kill the person you were the, year be the day before, okay, the week before, the month before, 
and beat that person that you were Tuesday. Beat that person that you were Thursday. Get a tiny fraction of a bit better. That's, that's what God wants. That's what your creator wants. That's what the universe wants. They don't want flatliners. We have enough flatliners in this world. We have enough seven and sevens in this world. We have enough O and 14s. We don't need any more of those fucking guys. So the challenge has been laid out. We will see. I believe in these guys and what they have. We all need wake up calls. We all need accountability. That's why we're in masterminds. I do, they do, you do. And if they can rise to the occasion, they're going to create a habit in their life, Operation Money Suck, that's going to change their world. It's going to change their business. It's going to change their marketing. It's going to change their bank account. It's going to literally change their world. But they need to do the work. They need to do the work when nobody's watching. They need to be sick to their stomach um, when nobody's, when they come up short. They need to not be able to live with losing. They need to Tom Burns it. They need to make a decision to cut off. Decide means decision. Decide means cut off. It means you make a decision and you never look back. You make a decision. Tom made a decision 29 years ago. And then every day of his life since then has been staying on that decision wagon. That's all it is. There's nothing fancy. There's no magic pills. There's no special motivation. He made a decision 29 years ago and every day since then, 10,585 days, he has worked his ass off to stay on that decision wagon, that decision wagon. 29 years, one day at a time, Red X, don't break the red chain, don't break the red chain, don't break the red chain, voting for himself, voting for himself, voting for himself. And there is no finish line. A guy like that has no finish line. Jerry Seinfeld has no finish line. I have no finish line. It's just keep going, going, chip away, chip away, chip away, chip away. Can't live with losing. Can't live with losing. Chip away, chip away. 10,585 and O. Oh. Tell me, tell me what you can't do. I'd love to hear your excuse or your whining or your complaining. Speak, speak of the devil. Whining, complaining about what you can't do. You can't go 14 and 0, you can't go 1 and 0, you can't go 7 and 0, you can't go 365 and 0. But a guy like that can go 10,000 and 0. Winners aren't losers. Listen, I need your fax number if you want to be added to my private confidential fax um, list. You got to get me your fax number. You got to reply to this email and send Leanne your fax. I send a fax about once a week. It's free, complimentary, no charge to you. It's some of my very best off the grid um, money making and marketing. Stuff that I can't share in videos. Stuff I can't share in, uh, um, in email. Stuff I can't share online. So it's some of my most powerful, powerful money making and marketing, and I fax it. I usually send the fax on Fridays. And if you don't have a fax machine, no worries. Buy the software below, which most of the guys do. It's called M Fax, and it's pennies a day. And then you'll be able to receive faxes in your email box, which is second best thing. You should have a fax machine. You should buy a fax machine. I have two fax machines. I have a fax machine in world headquarters here, and I have a fax machine in my home in Florida, in Naples. I have a fax machine um, for important confidential documents and for communication. So you should have a fax machine, you should have a fax number, and if you don't, use MFAX. And then send your fax number to Leanne at this email, and she'll, uh, she'll add you to 
uh, our list and you'll get all that great free off the grid information. That's it for today. Do what we do. Make sure when you get home tonight, you take the time to hug your family, your queen, your children, your teenagers. If your kids are away at school or they've moved away, make sure they hear your voice every day. Not texting, not emailing, pick up the phone, make sure your son and daughter, they hear your voice every day. Hug your wife, hug your children, you'll feel better, they'll feel better. And tell them that you love them and you respect them. And then back it up with behavior. Be present, build that legacy after 6 p.m. Win the mornings, conquer the chaos of the afternoon, and build the only legacy that'll truly matter after 6 p.m. every night. Be with your family tonight physically, be there mentally, give them a hug, you'll feel better, they'll feel better. Two words that change my life, two words that'll change your life. Be relentless.